Today, the U.S. Department of Energy is researching the safe implementation of a technology called carbon sequestration, also known as carbon capture and storage, or CCS. This approach stores carbon dioxide, or CO2, generated from human activities for millennia as a means to mitigate global climate change. CCS involves capturing CO2 before it is released from large industrial facilities, such as power plants, oil refineries, or cement plants. Once captured, the CO2 is compressed to a liquid-like state and transported by pipeline to a storage site, where it is injected through a well several thousand feet below the surface of the earth into porous rocks, such as sandstone. Overlying impermeable layers of rock, such as shale, act as a seal or cap and prevent the CO2 from moving upward towards the surface. Scientists around the world believe that CCS holds promise as a safe, cost-effective means of keeping billions of tons of CO2 out of the atmosphere. This will have a positive impact in our efforts to stop and reverse climate change. Worldwide, there are plenty of places to safely store large quantities of CO2, but they are not evenly distributed, so the potential for underground storage of CO2 varies from region to region. In 2003, the Department of Energy's National Energy Technology Laboratory formed seven regional carbon sequestration partnerships to assess geologic formations suitable for storage and to determine the best approaches to implement carbon sequestration in each region. This video describes the work of these partnerships. Today, the regional partnerships represent the combined effort of more than 350 organizations covering 42 states and four Canadian provinces. Partnership members include energy companies, industry, farmers, foresters, state and local governments, regulatory agencies, electric utilities, national laboratories, universities and academic institutions, and civic groups. This diverse group of partners ensures that all viewpoints are represented as the research teams establish practical and environmentally sound strategies for each region. The regional partnership effort is being implemented in three phases. During phase one, characterization, the partnerships gathered information and built digital databases of regional rock formations and large industrial sources of CO2. Collectively, these partnership databases suggest potential CO2 storage capacity of approximately 12,200 billion tons in saline formations, nearly 200 billion tons in unminable coal seams, and 130 billion tons in depleted oil and gas reservoirs. This storage capacity is enough to store hundreds of years worth of CO2 from all the large industrial facilities in North America. In phase two, validation, the regional partnerships are conducting more than 20 field tests using small quantities of CO2 to evaluate various monitoring and computer modeling techniques and to learn more about CO2 dispersion within deep porous rock layers. The regional partnerships have recently moved into phase three, development. In this phase, each partnership will conduct one or more 10-year projects that demonstrate safe and economical CO2 capture, transportation, injection, and geologic storage. Although each region has unique geology, the field tests being conducted by each partnership follow a core set of steps that reflect standard industry and regulatory best practices to ensure project safety and integrity. These steps include site characterization, permitting, well construction, injection, CO2 monitoring, and well closure. The partnerships also place a great emphasis on public outreach and dissemination of technical research. Multiple test sites and varying geologies across the regions are providing valuable lessons through comparisons of test results. Site characterization and selection is perhaps the most critical part of a geologic sequestration project. It involves a rigorous site screening process based on an analysis of the underground rock formation and other factors at the surface. As shown here, a vibrosized truck, sometimes called a thumper truck, is used to generate images of the rock layers deep underground. It's like a medical ultrasound examination for a potential CO2 storage site. As seen in this diagram, Ideal locations lie deep underground and have thick layers of cap rock, sealing the storage zone from any pathway to the surface. Careful site characterization will ensure that only the most suitable sites are chosen for CO2 storage operations. Well construction begins once it has been determined that the site is suitable for geologic sequestration operations and all necessary permits are in hand. 
Each regional partnership is working with the appropriate federal and state agencies to obtain all necessary permits for its field tests. In addition, the Environmental Protection Agency has started a process to develop new regulations specifically for geologic carbon sequestration, and the knowledge developed through the field tests will help in the formation of these regulations. Injection occurs after monitoring for baseline information. All of the partnerships are using strict operational guidelines to ensure that the field tests go smoothly and safely. Here, CO2 is brought to the site through a pipeline. Another option would be to deliver CO2 from a tanker truck. The regional partnerships are actively involved in educating the public about carbon capture and storage. Shown here is a tabletop model of geologic sequestration. They conduct public information meetings to give people an opportunity to ask questions and offer suggestions. Communication materials, including websites, videos, and brochures, are also used to share information with the public. In the development phase, there will be one or two large-scale projects in each region. Results obtained from these efforts will provide the foundation for commercial carbon sequestration projects across North America. Each large-scale project will involve the injection of one million or more tons of CO2. This quantity is equivalent to the low end of future commercial projects. The 10-year effort will include up to three years of site characterization, computer modeling, and well construction, two to four years of CO2 injection, and two to four years of underground CO2 monitoring, verification, and accounting and results analysis. The Midwest Geologic Sequestration Consortium is partnering with the Archer Daniels Midland Company, or ADM, an agricultural products processing company, to complete a large volume deep saline sequestration test at the company's industrial complex located in Decatur, Illinois. 333,000 tons of CO2 will be injected deep into the Mount Simon sandstone in the Illinois basin over a three-year period, leading up to 1 million metric tons total. The CO2 will come from ADM's ethanol production facility. The Plains CO2 Reduction Partnership is planning two projects. The Western Canadian Basin Project, located in northeastern British Columbia, Canada, will capture over 1 million tons of CO2 per year from one of the largest gas processing plants in North America. This project will demonstrate long-term sequestration of CO2 in a saline reservoir. The Williston Basin Project involves the transport of at least half a million tons of CO2 per year from an existing coal-fired power plant in central North Dakota and injection of the CO2 into an oil reservoir. This project will demonstrate enhanced oil recovery, leading to the long-term sequestration of CO2. The Southeast Regional Carbon Sequestration Partnership will conduct a two-step large volume test in the Lower Tuscaloosa Formation. The first step, or early test, will inject 1.5 million tons of CO2 per year for 18 months. The CO2 will come from a naturally occurring source from the Jackson Dome and will be delivered by Denbury Resources CO2 Pipeline. The second step, or anthropogenic test, will inject approximately 250,000 tons of CO2 per year for four years. The CO2 will be supplied from a pilot unit capturing CO2 from flue gas produced from a Southern Company coal-fired power plant near the injection site. The Southwest Regional Partnership on Carbon Sequestration will conduct a large-scale test into the deep Permian-aged White Rim Sandstone in the Farnham Dome of Utah. The injection of CO2 will occur over a four-year period, leading up to a total injection amount of 3 million tons. The CO2 will come from both a natural CO2 source in the Jurassic-aged Nugget Sandstone and a second potential source from a coal bed methane production field northwest of Price, Utah. The Midwest Regional Carbon Sequestration Partnership will conduct detailed characterization of a primary site located near an ethanol plant in Ohio and at an alternate site located near a planned integrated gasification combined cycle plant in Indiana. 
Both sites are saline formations within the extensive Mount Simon sandstone formation. The partnership plans to inject a total of 1 to 2 million tons of CO2 during a four-year period. The Big Sky Partnership's large volume sequestration project will inject 1 to 3 million tons of CO2 into the Nugget Sandstone Saline Formation in southwest Wyoming. The CO2 will come from a nearby gas processing plant and injected at a depth of approximately 11,000 feet over a three year period. The West Coast Regional Carbon Sequestration Partnership will inject 1 million tons of CO2 over four years as part of an integrated carbon capture and storage test near Bakersfield, California. Hosting the project is Clean Energy Systems, a power generation technology developer who will supply the CO2 from a new oxycombustion power plant based on rocket engine technology. The site is located at the southern end of the Great Central Valley, one of the largest CO2 storage resources in West Carb's seven-state territory. By injecting the plant's full exhaust stream underground, the project will demonstrate that emission-free electricity from fossil fuels is a reality. There are many sequestration research projects around the world. To better understand how the Regional Partnership Program ranked on an international level, DOE asked the International Energy Agency's Greenhouse Gas R&D Program to convene a panel of experts from around the world to evaluate the achievements to date and the planned research in the development phase. The resulting assessment gained noteworthy remarks. The IEA found the individual projects within Phase 3 program complement each other and together build a comprehensive and expansive research program, the size and scope of which is unique throughout the world. As the world demand for energy continues to grow and as mandates to restrict emissions of greenhouse gases emerge, the development of technologies, such as CCS, will be important in a carbon-constrained world. The regional partnerships are working to ensure that this technology will be available for commercial deployment. For more information about DOE's carbon sequestration program and the regional carbon sequestration partnerships, please visit the NETL website.